Okay, welcome to the Ticket Punks TV Review channel. My name's Neil. We've also got John on the call. A couple of years ago, we started up Ticket Punks and did a couple of gig reviews on YouTube. Um, and in between then and now, everybody knows what happened and all the gigs went away for a while. Luckily, gigs are back. We're very grateful to have Kenny on the call with us. Good evening, Kenny. Evening, guys. So we're going to start doing these again. Um, we did do them in a little studio last night. It's way easier to do these things on Zoom now. So we're just going to do them over Zoom. So if anybody has been to see a gig in the last month or so, wants to get in touch and do a little review with us, we'd love to chat to you. And we'll start building up the YouTube channel with gig reviews and just keep going from there. There's been a lot of gigs going on. We've got quite a few people to get through. Kenny's the first one in. So um, Kenny, do you want to tell us who you saw and where you saw them and when you saw them? Yep, I saw the Killers uh, on the second night when they were in Falkirk, uh, 7th of June, uh, yeah, through at Falkirk Stadium. Um, absolutely fantastic. So you've been a fan of the Killers for a long time since the first album. When did you get into the Killers? Do you know, I, I've got this kind of eclectic music taste where I'll, I'll listen to pretty much anything. And the Killers have always been uh, one of the bands that I would sort of go to. Probably not so much the Killers. I think I got more into it. Um, and it, excuse me for this, but when Brandon Flowers went solo and Charlize Theron was in his video. And that's when I really paid attention to Brandon Flowers and really got into the Killers. <laughs> um but I just don't think there's one of these uh, bands where I just don't think there's uh, there's a bad song and uh, just really enjoy listening to all their music. So, yeah, not a diehard fan, but, um, yeah, just really, really keen to see them. Excellent. Who did you go to the gig with? Uh, wife and two kids. Well, kids kids are 20, 21 and 16, so not young kids, but, um, yeah, so the, the, the four of us went through. Fantastic. And I think it all, everybody's into the band, hence why they went to the gig with you. They was happy to go. Yeah. Oh yeah, I absolutely delight. Especially the kids. I never knew they um, they liked uh, the Killers as much as they did. But when I said, "Oh, right. I managed to get tickets," um, they were like, "Oh, Yahoo! Going to see the Killers." Oh, fantastic! Yeah, we've got a few gigs, uh, a few bands like in our family, Foo Fighters. One of them, you know, everybody likes them, so we tend to go and see them all together. Um, so I believe at the first, the first of the two nights in Falkirk, there were complaints about the volume. You were there the second night, so. How, how was the sound for you? Sound was absolutely fantastic. Um, the first night, um, yeah, I saw it on the news the next morning. I think it was actually on 4th 1 it came out. that, um, And then they ended up being the news that they'd been asked to turn the music down. So I was thinking, that's, you know, the locals have been, they've been given permission by the council at Falkirk to have a gig and then being told to turn the music down. I thought that's absolutely shocking, especially with a, a rock band. But um, I've got to say this, the sound the second night was absolutely fantastic. And, um, you, you weren't struggling to hear it at all. You know, I would say it was a pretty normal volume um, for what I would have expected. So I, I shudder to think what it would have been like the night before. But what they were doing, um, I forget the name of the, the production company. It was some initials. They were actually sending staff around to make sure that people had good seats because it was the, the side stand had a, a pillar up the side of it. And it obstructed the, the view of the stage ever so slightly, the, the big screen. And they were actually moving people to different seats so you could get in. So I think the first night there'd been complaints about it, and the second night the production team addressed it and were absolutely superb. Really good, really good quality sound though. It's always good when um, there's feedback and it's acted upon very quickly like that. I gig up in the two nights, it's quite good to get act on the second night. You know, not only sort the volume for the residents, but also, as you said, sort of the seat for people. That's decent. So in terms of um, the stadium itself, I always find stadiums, especially football stadiums, can be hit or miss with gigs, especially based on where the, the stage is placed. If it's on one end of the pitch, you find there's a lot of people looking sideways, you know, at, at a stage. What was the setup at Falkirk? It was the same sort of thing. So Falkirk has three stands. I've never been to the stadium before. I'm not a football fan, but um, there's three stands a main stand at the long side of the pitch and then the two shorter stands if you, if you like um, at the narrower sides and the, the stage was set up on the side obviously where there, where there is no no stand um, it could have perhaps been brought forward I don't know maybe 10 feet then all views would have been unobstructed but just because of where it had been set up it was um, it was just from I would say two rows up the side it was probably just slightly obstructed, but it was nothing that really caused you any problems. You know, it was yeah, it was, it was good, good. But uh, it's not uh, the stadium itself looks kind of dingy. But by the time all the production's done and everyone's in, it's it was a it was a good venue, really good venue. Yeah. Well, that's was good. It a good one uh, of the things. Lighting show, Kenny. 
And the killers oh. usually put on a good show live. So how was the lighting and everything? Was it uh, top notch? It was absolutely fantastic, Johnny. Yeah, um, the light in the light show was absolutely superb. Um, sounds were fantastic. It was it was top class. You know, really good quality lighting. How was Brandon as well? He's a bit of an entertainer live. So uh, was he interacting well with the crowd and kind of getting them eating oh. out of the palm of his hand? Or? Definitely, it, it sort of held you just just here. You know, the whole thing is his voice, his stage presence, and I never realised that, that he's so small. You know, he's just a, a wee, a wee skinny guy, and but he, he just commands that stage. You know, and I'm looking at him, thinking, what a small guy, what a big voice. But but Brandon Flowers, um, his voice is superb. Live, I was blown away. It was like I was going to say, listen on a CD, no, but no, be like listening online. You know, his his voice was absolutely flawless, um, and the, everyone in the crowd was just going along with him, and he's, even just his movement. I'm not saying that he's anything like Freddie Mercury, but you know, that sort of pacing, sort of primate apex predator, you uh-huh. know, commanding the stage. Uh, so everybody's eyes were on him the whole time. He was absolutely fantastic. I always enjoy it when the front man's moving like that. Um, I think it can bring a gig down if the whole band's quite static. So yeah. I always think that movement helps with the gig. And uh, whenever I've seen footage on live, he always does seem to be moving and interacting with the crowd. I always thought he was massive. I always thought he was a really tall fella. No, he's just this skinny, skinny little guy with massive hair. Can, can we claim that as a Ticket Punks exclusive? Brandon Flowers is we. Because he's I, just think we need to, I think the public. He just did. He just did, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, a good, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a good point. Most of the bands I like to go to see, the front man, you know, or front person, whoever they are, like there's a lot going on. and as Johnny says, a static front man can make quite a boring gig at times. Um, it's one of the things about the Chili Peppers that I quite like live. I don't like a lot about what they do live, even though I like them a lot. Live, I don't find them to be the best band in the world, but there's always somebody to look at between Anthony and Flea and John rushing about the place. It's always quite entertaining. Um, how did you find... Um, Falkirk's obviously not the most popular venue in Scotland for gigs, outdoor gigs. You know, you've generally got Hamden for the big ones, really, sometimes Murrayfield. And there's some other venues ticking about. You've got obviously the Glasgow Transmit, Glasgow Green, Bella Houston. How did you find Falkirk? I know a lot of people had problems getting away from Falkirk after the gig. How was it? How was that for you? To be honest, Neil, we, we had no problems at all. Um, I heard on the first night there was, you know, all sorts of jams. There were roadworks on the M9 anyway. But I have to say that once you pass um, the Kelpies, um, you know, sort of monuments on the side of the M9, and you go off at Falkirk, it was so well signposted, you know, for event traffic. Right. And there's like a, it's not a dual carriageway, but it's a really wide single carriageway. And then right. when you got to the top of this roundabout where you could go to a proper event parking, um, the roundabout was sort of closed off, done a U-turn and cars were all just parked on the hard shoulder there, um, completely off the road. So we parked right. there and it took pff, not even 10 minutes to walk in. And um, then at the end of the night, it was just walk back to the car and no traffic at all. It was... Yes. Oh, wow. You know, I've been to Murrayfield and, and Hamden and you, you go to these places and, you know, getting out of Hamden, you've got to walk 10 miles back to where you parked the car up by Mount Florida or Rutherglen. But yeah. it was so accessible at Falkirk. It wasn't as big numbers, obviously, as what you would get at Hamden. But um, no, absolutely. I would say I would I would rather go to a gig at Falkirk again than go into Hamden um, and try and worry about parking and stuff because I got parked so oh, close to the place. Mm. That's, good that's really know. interesting feedback, guys. Mm. Yeah, we always one of the things John and I want to do was build a database of venues and share this kind of information, you know, about parking and you know what time to get there and where's the best place to eat, eat nearby and stuff like that. And obviously, when when things started winding down, the gigs just left that. But it'd be good to spin that back up again and just create this kind of database for our members of different venues around the country and what the best routes are or this kind of thing. I mean, I was looking at um, the the acts that have played for Kirk over the years. I've got a little list here. I think Elton John was the first ten years ago, twenty twelve. Um, and since then, there's, there's only been about nine gigs before the killers. So, you know, hopefully they're going to start doing more up there. If you certainly, people like yourself enjoy it, that'd be quite good. I think um, Tom Jones, Rod Stewart, they've all played their madness and stuff, you know, but that was all quite a few years ago now. So you, you'd certainly endorse it, obviously. Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. I recommend anybody to go to Falkirk Stadium for a gig. Excellent, excellent. That's good. Um, Johnny, anything else to ask, Kenny? The, the big question, Kenny, well, there's two. The first is, 
Would you go back and see the Killers again if they played Falkirk next week? Were they that good that you'd go back so soon? I would go anywhere in the country now to see the Killers live. They were that good. Excellent. Um, I've seen, I was lucky enough to see Springsteen at Hamden a few years back. And for me, he was, it's a different subject, I know, but he was a, a masterclass. Brandon Flowers' showmanship matched Springsteen. That's um, a big well, Absolutely, so he, he matched it. Yeah, and he's, he's fantastic. I would go back and see him anywhere. The second question: What was the food and catering like? Because that's always the other one. We've covered parking like real middle-aged men. Now let's move on to how is the catering? Were, were the facilities good? Did you even bother using them? Were the queues massive? Yeah, so there was loads of catering staff there. So you got in through security, and I must, if you didn't mind, um, hats off to security as well. They were superb getting in. Really, really good, helpful, friendly. Security um, can make or break a gig, to be honest. You can turn up at a gig and have a bad experience getting in, and it just upsets your whole night. I always think right. it's an underrated one, so it's good to hear they were good. They were superb, you know, friendly. Even when bags were getting searched, they were friendly. And people, it was almost like being in America. How's your, have a nice day, enjoy the gig. You know, it's like... In Scotland, we take that as a sort of insult, like, hi, how are you? It's like, what are you talking about? You know, yeah. but um, you're kind of offended by someone asking how you are. Um, but got inside the, the loads of food trucks, alcohol, there was tons of everything available. No more than five minutes queuing, uh, you know, the usual burgers, nachos, chips, fish and chips. No more than five minute queues. They were really slick and, and well organized as well. So they weren't all close together so the people that were being served and leaving had space to go without infringing onto the next ah, stall good. um yeah very 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 slick um toilet facilities were fantastic as well i must say um security staff again monitoring who was coming in and out of the toilets and hand washing and sanitizing stations um it was all all that stuff uh, so infrastructure if you like johnny was really really well really well That's organized good. That's good. That's cool. You mentioned you brought up yourself Springsteen, so um, it's a good time to talk about this. So we'll just focus on the end here. Springsteen tickets went on sale for Murrayfield this week. You're obviously a Springsteen fan. Um, have you decided to go? What's your thoughts on that? I'm not going to see Springsteen this time. I would love to go, um, even if you fought your way through and managed to get some tickets. Um, my issue is, I saw Springsteen in Glasgow and I remember him at the time saying, I'm 60 effing three, man, give me a break. And now I, I just feel with certain singers, it's like, don't meet your heroes. I saw him when he was fantastic, and I would be really worried that he just wasn't the same. Right. Um, I know that's kind of doing him a disservice. He's, well, he's Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band are fantastic, but I just worry that I've seen him at his best. And if he's not his best, right. I'm not going to be happy. So I thought, no, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go this time. That's fair enough, that's fair enough. Um, I took the plunge, uh, simply because it's Murrayfield, I think. It's not a trip to Glasgow, and obviously most of the big gigs for us guys in the Central Belt are going to be in Glasgow. And I just thought, Let, let's give, him a ch give it a go at Murrayfield. I'm sure he'll be good. Maybe he won't do the full three hours. Like you said, he's a total showman, and he likes to put on a great show. John and I actually went together to see him and in the last time he was there, and mm -hmm. it was one of the best gigs I've ever seen. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm going to give it a shot, but... The, the ticket pricing has gone through the roof for acts like Springsteen and Ticketmaster aren't really helping that. So we'll maybe come to that in another video, John. But I just wanted to ask Kenny, because I know he is a Springsteen fan if he was going to go this week. John, what yeah. about yourself? Um, similar to Kenny, having seen Bruce before, I thought about it. Um, and then as I saw the ticket price creeping up, I thought, for all that I love Bruce Springsteen, I don't love him enough to pay 400 quid for a standing ticket. Um, but I know we're going to discuss this in depth a bit later, Neil. Um, so I'm going to keep my powder dry on my thoughts on dynamic ticket pricing um, we'll back to in it. another video. But um, I would love to see Bruce again. And if he wants to come round and play in my living room, I'll happily give him 400 quid. Um, <laughs> but that would be the limit of it. Fair enough. Fair copy. Okay, I think we'll leave it there. Kenny, anything else from yourself on the killers? No, just thank you for giving me a shot at the night. You like what I did there? I've no idea what you're talking about. I'm not a huge killers fan. Johnny's sure. laughing. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, but I know about two songs. I know about two songs. 
Um, well, listen, Kenny, we really appreciate you being the first of the new gig review uh, crew to come my on. Pleasure, my pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for your time. Um, for everybody else, this is going to be an ongoing thing. So if you like the video, please give us a like below. And if you want to see more of these, please subscribe to the channel. We're going to be doing these fairly regularly now. We've got a nice little list of people to get through. So um, aside from that, thanks, Kenny. Cheers, John. And we'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Bye.